Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Bruce Ellis, and this is the Insider Report. So sit back, relax, and let your ears do the walking as I fill you in on what's going on in the area this weekend and beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. And uh, Cat is away, so I got to play by myself today. That's it. I'm all over the show by myself, and that is all right. We've done it before and everything. And uh, before we get going, I can talk about this weekend. And I did see Cat this weekend. She was at the uh, Monarch Gardens Jog Your Memory Color Run, and it was fantastic down there at the port. I mean, the port I went down this morning, I had to go pick up a couple of garbage cans, and I looked down there, and the port looks like Tinkerbell threw up all over it. I mean, it was just all different colors, chalk all over the place. Yeah, it looks like rainbow down there. Yes, indeedy. So it's cool. You know, brightens up the uh, port a little bit there, the boardwalk and everything. But uh, I think we're supposed to have rain this Wednesday. So if that happens, that stuff will go bye-bye real fast. And we won't have it for our Doctoberfest this weekend. So that'll be groovy. And and I hope the rain goes away before the Doctoberfest this weekend. Geez, uh, last year we got one day in. This year we backed it up a week so we could get a couple days in and everything. So, yeah. So we did the color run. And then, as I was talking about last week, took my girlfriend Crystal. It was her birthday week. And uh, we went and saw Alien Ant Farm down there at Elk Valley Casino. So I took her down there for a birthday. And the band that we always laughed about, me and Kat always talk, whenever their name pops up, Snickle Friends. And we always laughed about how that was a cool name and everything like that. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I saw, I got to finally see him perform because they opened for him. And then this other band came out, Clockwork Hero. And, you know, so both bands were just rocking. It was a more, it's more of a heavy metal sound in there and everything, which I can take or I have different levels of it that I can deal with and everything. But we got three for the price of one. I think Clockwork Hero just popped up at the last minute and, they said, hey, you want to come jam? And so we got a special treat on that one. But I hadn't been out for a while since I've been raising Junior, and it's, it was really nice to be able to get out and see one of the shows again. I used to go to them all the time, and but it's like, hey, life has its ways that, uh, you know, changes things. But now it's all coming around. He's getting older, and I'm getting babysitters and all that good stuff, so it's working out even better. So that's right on. I had a great weekend. I hope everybody out there had a good one, too. And yesterday, yes, I, yes Sunday, I just sat back and relaxed and watched football and racing, and didn't do much. Yeah, it was kind of a lazy day since Saturday was so busy. But anyways, yeah, like I said, I hope everybody got out there and had some fun. And we got a lot more stuff going on. Before we get going here, I'd like to thank the Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. If you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows here at KCIW, all you got to do is go to kciw.org and you will be on your merry way. And speaking of those castaways... Our favorite castaway is on board here. I'm not I'm not all alone in the studio, at least for a little bit. I got my brother Dave here. So Dave Keene from the Oregon South Coast Fisherman is here to give us the fishing report. What is going on out there? How well, are you doing, Dave? Brother Bruce, good to see you. I'm glad you had fun this weekend. Yeah. We had this good music and and all that good stuff with more good music coming up this this next weekend, I believe. And y- y- we'll probably oh, yeah, be we talking about that. Fest thing we'll oh, be talking yeah. about. oh, yeah, that's going to be fun. Excellent. Yeah, I plan on. Uh, no, you on haven't seen, you've been catching some fish, man. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been fishing a little bit. Yeah, you've been I like to fish. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, my gosh. That sign above the door it definitely is true. A, a fisherman lives here with a normal person. I get lots of comments on that. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's <laughs> right above my door when you walk in the house. With a normal person. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I'm the fisherman, but. I, I, I picked up on that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So speaking of fish, okay, bottom fishing is alive and well. We're still out there securing our five rockfish and two lingcod when you can, and also one cabazon. You are allowed as part of your five rockfish bag limit. Uh, Pacific halibut, boy, there was a real good bite, I think, yesterday or the day before. It's kind of hit or miss, but when it's on, you can really get some really nice big Pacific halibut in that 50, 60, 70 pound range. Yeah, like you did that one. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a while back. Yeah. Fortunate to have four, four, four fish now, four halibut. So pretty happy. I get cool. two more to tag out. I'll be done. So I look forward to getting out for that. California halibut. I picked up a couple of those, and uh, you can get those. They're, they're they're shallow water, kind of close to the beaches, off the Windshock, off the Sport Haven, and actually some are coming into the uh, estuary the California halibut. And they're a very good eating fish, and they can get it in that 15, 20-pound range. Oh, sweet. So those are good eaters. Yeah. 
Uh, tuna. Oh, my gosh. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Forget about it. I've been seeing some tuna. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been fortunate to get on two tuna trips, and they were yeah. both very productive. Uh, there might be one last shot going out maybe Wednesday. It's coming up real quick. I just found out about that this morning, so we'll see. Even though it's kind of stormy and, you know, maybe rainy, what you look for is the uh, the terrafin report, where the, the temperature break is, where the warm water is, the chlorophyll is, and usually if you find that, you're going to find some tuna. So I'll get a better read today whether we're going to be able to go on Wednesday or not. You got to go out a ways for them, though, like yeah, 40, 40, 40, 50, 50 miles. miles. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, I, my, my neighbor, Troy, uh-huh. he helped me build my deck there and ever that guy, yeah. a good friend of mine, and he has been going. I've actually had link cod for the first time. Uh, you know, he brought home two big huge suckers, mm-hmm. and uh, he cut off some steaks and passed them out to some of his neighbors, and I got a couple of them, and I mean, that was awesome. And then yeah. I don't recall... Although I I knew I I was familiar with the taste, but because it's in some not tacos fish taco I don't know it's in something that I was talking about that it was like I know I've tasted that before, but just eating it it was just right off the it just nice it was melted yeah. in your mouth it was like butter you know yeah yeah nothing like fresh fish it, it was like so that oh dang good yeah. yeah and then he got a bunch of tuna and he's been smoking it uh-huh. and putting it in that uh, and yeah, all the whole tuna. So, that's a lot of work but, it's but he said rewarding. they were about 50 miles out yeah as yeah. Told me. yeah yeah so okay cool yeah so we'll see if i get a shot at one more shot at that it would be fun even though i don't need more tuna there is a thing called tuna fever it's just it's so addicting when those yeah. rods and lines go off it's it's quite a thrill i bet a yeah thrill. yeah absolutely so all right tuna uh crab uh you, crab season is open until october 16th at the du- dungeon is crab outside here uh, they're they're getting fuller, and you know, they're still in that stage, molting stage, and filling up with their meat. But uh, you can go out and get Dungeness crab. Right on. And oh, salmon is closed in the ocean. No more salmon fishing off of Brookings. However, the Chetco is now starting to heat up for salmon fishing. You can fish and catch salmon in the Chetco River. You can okay. Get two per day, two adults. Only one can be a wild. So you can get a wild and a hatchery oh. or two hatchery adults per day. Uh, you can get up to five wilds for the season. Once you tag out with that for your five, you can still continue fishing for hatchery, hatchery adults. And you can keep up to five jacks per day, which is a non-adult, smaller than an adult. So you can keep five of those. But you'll see a lot of boats. If probably when you've been down there, you see a lot more boats now trolling in the estuary. Very cool. Yeah, and some of my friends have been hooking up with that. Right all. So, and the Rogue River. A friend of mine called this morning. He got a nice 25-pounder this morning on the Rogue River. So that's still fishing well for salmon. Thank you. Thank but you, yeah. again, the ocean is closed for salmon fishing. Right on, right on. So you just have to trust the fish if they tell you whether they're wild or if they're, you know, they are. <laughs> wild, they pay that wild thing song. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of my favorite. You know, cause, yeah, yeah. No, aren't they tagged? Or there's yeah, something? there's <laughs> an, it's called an adipose fin. It's a little t- fin near the caudal tail, you know, the, on the top oh, part. Okay. And, and when that's clipped, when they're a little smolt, right. it stays clipped. And you would notice right away if, if it doesn't have the adipose fin, it's hatchery. If it has that little fin, it's considered wild. Okay, okay. That's how you tell. Yeah. See, my mind went right to, well, do the fish tell you if they're- Yeah, I know. That was good. Wild. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you know, thank you for asking that. So <laughs> No, I knew what it was. <laughs> I'm not that damn dumb. I just looked that way. But yeah, hey, that's great. You guys got a meeting coming up? Yeah, we do. Uh, okay. Wednesday, September 18th, 5.30 oh, p.m. at the library. Okay. Fire September, September library. Yep. As per usual. Sweet. Well, always a pleasure to have you on with the Fish Report, my friend. And it was nice to have somebody else in the studio for a minute. <laughs> Good to chat with you. It was all alone, <laughs> but all right, cool. So get out there and catch some more. I, there's one thing we're Facebook buds. Mm-hmm. I always get to see your results. Yeah. Oh, hopefully yeah. I'll have some to post. I like when they tower, like you can barely see you. <laughs> <laughs> like that one alibi, man. Oh yeah, yeah. That, was a, that was a beauty. <laughs> that thing was a monster. Yeah. All right, Dave, we'll go have fun. Think Mary Lou and you got a line dancing. Uh, got to go yeah. do some dancing. Okay. Well, yeah, we are. Shane, Fridays and Wednesdays. It puts all better now, so you're Yeah, it is. Yeah, there Thanks. you go. All right. All right, good talking to you, Bruce. You too, brother. Have a good one. See you this weekend. Yes, absolutely. All right. You got to saw Foxy's has a big event Saturday. Oh, man, everybody's doing something, it seems like. It's great. Turtle Rock moved theirs to that weekend. So. Oh. Take care, man. Hey, brother Bruce. Hey, say hello to Mary Lou for me. All right, all right, all right. It was a good time to have, uh, yeah, Brother Dave on board telling us what's going on out in the fish. And it's cool because I've finally been able to, yeah, like my neighbors, like I said, been catching them. So that's really groovy. Hey, let's go ahead and hop right into the music schedule at Elk Valley Casino at the Betty Green Center. They got on 921. It's comedian Ron Josel, 
Doors open at 7.30, shows at 8. On the 28th, they got a truck giveaway for info. You can go to elkvalleycasino.com, so if you want to keep up on that one. The Warriors Bar on Grill, music starts at 7.30. On the 13th and 14th, they'll have Jesse Mead. On the 20th and the 21st, they'll have Steve Nelson. And on the 27th and 28th, they'll be Lon Goddard. And then Cisco will be playing on the 14th, Check Code Grange, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And on the 28th, it'll be at the Brookings Harbor Farmer's Market from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Mighty Steelhead, yep, you'll be catching them at the Doctoberfest this weekend on the 15th, Sunday. And on the 29th, they'll be at the House of Jambalaya down there in Crescent City at 1 p.m. The Italian guys are playing on the 29th at Augustino Wine Tasting Room at 3 p.m. And then Black GTO on the 13th. They're at Inateca from 7 to 10. On the 14th, they'll be at the Turtle Rock Fest at 4. On the 21st, they'll be at Tortuga Bar and Grill, 6 to 8. And then on the 27th, they'll be at Porta Pines, 7 to 10. And then you got Miss Stephanie Latore on the 20th. She'll be at the Inateca at 8 p.m. But on the 13th, Black GTO. The 20th, Stephanie Latour. And that was pretty much where I got on them, didn't I? That was it. Okay. So anyways, there we go. We got Lon Goddard's schedule here on the 13th. He'll be at Misty Mountain Brewing for 6 p.m. On the 18th, he'll be at Coon Tai, 6 p.m. On the 26th and the 27th, he'll be at Elk Valley Casino. Bloodline is playing on the 14th. It's a Foxy's End of Summer Bash. Don't have a time on that. Misty Mountain Brewing, music goes from 6 to 8. On the 13th, it'll be Lon Goddard. On the 20th, Ross and Elephant Factory. And on the 27th, Lon Goddard. And then Ranch Party's making an appearance there on the 22nd at Augustino's from 3 to 6. And then Mike Powell's got some solo gigs here on the 15th. He'll be at Augustino's uh, 3 to 6. On the 21st, the Grange Songwriters Showcase, 6 to 9. And then uh, the 27th, he'll be at Check Co. Brewing Company, 6 to 8. So that's it for the music. That's all I got. Yeah, if you want a copy of this, you can pick up the Insider of Southern Oregon Entertainment Newspapers out there. It's free, and you can grab that, and it'll have the schedule, the full schedule for the month in there, and a whole bunch of other stuff in it, like posters and all that, on all the good entertainment going on around the area. But yeah, if you have any music out there, if you're with a band, or all you got to do is send me an email with all the info to captaincurry541 at gmail.com, and we'll get you on your merry way, no problem. Put it in the, that and get it in the newspaper. There you go. Hey, the Checkco Library schedule. September is a National Library Card Sign-Up Month. You're invited to celebrate with them in celebration of the National Library Card Sign-Up Month in 2024. They're inviting everyone in the community to their week-long Reading is Sweet ice cream social. Stop by library anytime between September 16th and 21st to sign up for a library card or to make sure your library card account info is current and have an ice cream or popsicle on them. Just make sure to bring current proof of residence within the library district. Examples include a valid driver's license or a utility bill, and they'll sign you up for a card. Now the library's got some weekly events going on here. On Mondays at 5.30, you got Spanish Speakers Walking Group, a fitness and conversation group for Spanish speakers in the community. Tuesdays, they got the 11 a.m. story time, stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children. At 1.30 p.m., they've got the chair yoga class, a beginner's yoga class that focuses on the seated positions. Thursdays, 1.30, they've got another chair yoga class. And then 5.30 on Thursdays, they got easy flow yoga class. Now, this is a yoga class for beginners that includes standing poses. It is highly recommended that participants be able to comfortably get up and down on the floor. And then on Fridays at 4 p.m., they got Oro del Cuento as story songs and simple crafts for young children, all led in Spanish. And then they got a monthly and special events calendar here, starting with September 14th, 2 p.m., the Mario Kart Tournament. You can join Volunteer D for a friendly Mario Kart Tournament in the Forest Room. Racers of all ages are welcome. Uh, Wednesday, September 18th, 12 p.m., we got the Lifestyle Medicine going on. Joint OSU Associate Professor Stephanie Polizzi for a free monthly community discussion on the health, nutrition, and wellness. This month's discussion topic is the Endocrine Connection. On the 24th, 5.30, you got game nights at the Checo Brewing Company. This is an open game night featuring games from the Checo Library's board game collection. Hosted at Checo Brewing Company on Railroad Street. You can try a game 
from the library or bring one of your favorites. This is a free and fun opportunity to meet and connect with other board game enthusiasts in your community with plenty of table space to spread out. Kids are welcome, but they must be accompanied and supervised by an adult guardian. Game night happens every second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And then September 25th, 1 p.m., we got a free art workshop with Tori. Join volunteer and local artist Tori for a free hands-on art workshop. Materials provided. This workshop is geared towards adult artists and crafters. And then Thursday, September 26th, 4 p.m., you got the Lego Club. Lego builders and enthusiasts of all ages are invited to a free open building session in the library's youth section. And then September Book Clubs, September 12th, they got Club de Lectura, the library Spanish language book club, encourages parents with children to attend and enjoy an open, welcoming atmosphere. On the 18th at 6 p.m., they got the SOC Pride Book Club. This book club's geared toward older teens and adults. It's to discuss books which focus on LGBTQ plus characters and topics. And then on the 19th, 5.30 p.m., we got the Pub Grub Book Club. This casual book club is for adult fans of graphic novels and takes place off-site at Misty Mountain Bruin in downtown Brookings. And now all library-led programs and events are free to attend, whether you have a library card or not. For more info, you can visit checkcolibrary.org. You can follow them on Facebook, or you can call 541-469-7738. Hey, now it's time for some quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Here are a few quotes from novelist Agatha Christie. She was born September 15th, 1890. She says, Good advice is always certain to be ignored, but that's no reason not to give it. One does not recognize the really important moments in one's life until it's too late. She says, Never do anything yourself that others can do for you. And last but not least, she says, Every murderer is probably somebody's old friend. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Agatha Christie. That's right, with Cousin Bruce. Until next week, have a great one. Yeah, I like that last one there. Every murderer is probably somebody's old friend. <laughs> true, true. There you go. Hey, All Care Health is having a tobacco cessation workshop. It says, let's quit together. These are happening at two different libraries here on the 10th, 17th, and 24th. They'll be at the Checo Community Library at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And then on those same dates, 10th, 17th, and 24th, they'll be at the Curry Public Library in Gold Beach, noon to 1 p.m. This is open to all community members. Each workshop has six one-hour sessions. You can pick up some great tips on how to deal with urges and triggers and how to make healthy choices for you or someone else. To register for this or questions, you can call Sandra at 541-471-4106, extension 8216. And then Curry Public Library got something else going on here. They're presenting the Samurai in the Oregon Sky. This is happening on the 12th, 5.30 p.m. The public is invited for a screening of the documentary Samurai in the Oregon Sky. Community member Ed Iwata will introduce the film and speak at the end. In 1942, Japanese pilot Nobuo Fujita catapulted his seaplane off a submarine. He flew over the forests of southern Oregon and conducted the only manned aerial bombings of the United States mainland during World War II. He never dreamed he would one day be invited back to the region in here in Brookings, where he would begin a 35-year friendship with the people of our small Oregon town. Samurai in the Oregon Sky tells the story of how Mr. Fujita came to refer to his former target as his second home. Lana Saul is a Filmmaker and archival producer living in Portland, Oregon, she has worked in the film industry for over 25 years on a variety of independent, educational, and commercial products. And Samurai in the Oregon Sky is her second film and has already won three awards. So very cool, very cool. And like we said last week when we were talking about it, yeah, if you want to see Mr. Fujita's sword that he gave the town here, uh, you can go to the Checo Library and they got it in there and it's fantastic. It's really cool looking and it's a bit of cool Brookings history. So, hey, Forecastle Books is presenting his poetry reading with Mr. Horst Wolf. This will be happening on the 12th, 5.45 p.m. Horst has written several booklets of art with poetry, including Art Walk Musicians and Similar Low Life, My Last Trip to Mars, and, of course, one of my personal favorites, Goddesses, Nymphs, and Their Pets. 
The reading is followed by a spoken word open mic hosted by Michael Spring. Hey, and that's right. We got another one coming up. Last one of the year, our main event, Doctoberfest. This is our version of a tribute to the Oktoberfest. This will be happening, of course, at the Port of Brookings Harbor. We got two days there on the 14th from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And on the 15th, 10 a.m., well, you know, it's going to go to 8 p.m. on the 15th as well. This will be the Autumn Festival held in Munich, Germany that involves the drinking of beer. This is two days of celebrating this favorite German pastime on the boardwalk featuring local vendors, food, live music. There will also be several local breweries that's coming up this weekend, and we hope that the weather is going to stay beautiful. Hey, Lucky 7 Casino is presenting Comedy Night with Key Lewis. This is featuring Bob Johnston on the 14th at 8 p.m. Doors open at 7 p.m. Bob Johnston opens for stand-up comic headliner Key Lewis. Tickets are on sale uh, online or at the door. You can purchase them at www.eventbrite.com. You must be 21 years or older to attend this event. Okay, now it's time to catch a bit of real history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Yeah, I switched that up since Cap mentioned that last week. Right. G'day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of real history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know... The Queen Elizabeth II was never supposed to be the Queen? It's true. And here's the story. Well, when Queen Elizabeth II was born in London in 1926, she was a princess who was never expected to be a queen. Her father was not heir to the throne because he was not the eldest son in the family. However, Elizabeth's uncle, King Edward, stepped down from the throne, making his brother Elizabeth's dad the new king. Well, since Elizabeth was King Albert's oldest daughter, and he had no sons, she eventually became queen in 1952, making her the longest ruling British monarch. Well, she obviously took Long Live the Queen to heart. I hope you enjoyed this week's bit of real history with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Until next time, keep it real, but always keep it Real. I had to change the end. <laughs> oh, man. That was a good one. I like that. I like Cat made that suggestion. It opened up the door to a whole new history to look for and everything. And I didn't realize that that was about Queen Elizabeth either. I knew she was queen for a long time, though. Hey, all right, so here we go. We got, oh yeah, the 6th Annual Turtle Rock and Grass Music Festival is coming up this weekend as well on the 14th from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And they got performers, Petty Fever, tribute band paying homage to the legendary Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. They have The Way Outs, Black GTO, Second Bridge. Susan Rice is a funny old bag who has been making people laugh for over 41 years. That's what it says. Eric Escobar, the Mexipino comedian. We got the Spence Brothers Blues Band. And then they got a couple special acts here, two fire dancers and a special surprise host, Mr. Ty Boyce, which I guess he's not surprise host. If y'all know who the heck it is, it's going to be there. <laughs> That's just me. Hey, Pistol River Concerts Association, located at 24252 Carpenterville Road, presents Fog Holler. This will be happening on the 14th as well, 7.30 p.m. Boy, there's a lot of music in your lineup this weekend, everybody. I can predict that. Fog Holler is a bluegrass band with an edge. According to Fog Holler, it's simply that they write and play bluegrass. Tickets are available online or at Wright's Custom Framing and First Chapter Coffee House. So I guess you go to Pistol River Concert Association Facebook page and then you can get the online because I didn't have a thing online where the online was. Let's see, we got time for a couple more here. Uh, Gold Beach Library, located at 94341 3rd Street in Gold Beach, is presenting Outdoor Movie Night at the Library. This time they're showing Aladdin, the 2019 live-action version. This will be happening on the 14th, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Watch from the comfort of your car or bring your lawn chairs, jackets, blankets, and pillows for their outdoor movie showing in the parking lot. All movies are free with concessions available by donations and restrooms available in the lobby. Start time may vary based on the light and weather conditions, and in the event of rain, the film will be shown indoors. So you, you get the movie no matter how you look at it. Hey, the second Saturday sale at the Checo Grange will be happening on the 14th, 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
live music with Cisco and Lewis from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Vendors, for more info or to get a space, they still got room. You can text Linda at 541-661-0059. And then Porter and Pints Brewing Company in Crescent City is presenting stand-up comedy night with Eric Escobar and Ryan McComb. This will be happening on the 14th at 8.30 p.m. It's hosted by Anthony Lloyd, and there is an admission fee. So, hey, here we go. We got one more here. Stage Lights Songwriter Showcase happening on the 21st, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Czech Code Grange. This is their annual event to showcase the local songwriters. It is a family event. They encourage parents to bring their kids to share in a musical experience that will hopefully inspire them to take up music, too. The lineup includes Janessa Gabrielle, John Marshall, Bedford Smith, Tony Land, Kim Devine, Larry Fries, Long Goddard, Don Beckner, Mike Powell, and Alan Hensington. Light refreshments will be offered for sale, and they'll be having drawings throughout the evening for some great prizes. So there you go. That's the thing. Big old long week. That's it. Got the flying fickle finger of fate. From the producers, there is time to go. There's a whole bunch going on, and we got more to talk about even next week. So hope to see you all out there. Before we go, it's time to close out this week's show. I'd like to give a shout-out to fearless producers Ray and Tom for all their great work, making this look and sound good on the radio. And thank you all for tuning in again to this week's Insider Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can also catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report, by going to kciw.org. And hey, while you're there, check out the live stream we got going on as well. Hey, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. I'm signing off. Please support local businesses. Keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll see you out there. Bam! Yeah! <laughs> Holy Toledo. For music credits for the preceding show, go to kciw.org slash credits.